All right, every action anywhere is repeated everywhere throughout the universe. This is simply the, the, you know, the, the modern version of a holographic universe. Every fragment or piece or whatever you want to call it, fractal of the you know, universe has within it all the information of the entire universe. That's why everything in, in God's eyes is, from God's perspective, is omnipresent. All right. As a consequence, harmonic centers of the same measure of desire extend their actions outward from their centers toward other harmonic centers. Harmonic explosions of equal measure thus fill all space in God's omnipresent universe. Outward explosions which meet each other cannot be spheres, for all space must be filled. Tennis balls crushed together become cubes by gradually flattening where they meet at six points on curved surfaces. Likewise, outer explosions flatten into six planes of cubes. Okay, same thing. You know, circles become, spheres become uh, cubes, cubes become spheres, because all of space is full. It's not empty, like Newton would have you, have you believe, or I should say Einstein would have you believe. Um, so, you can't have space full of, of, of round spheres because where they touch, they're going to leave gaps. So, where they touch, they actually work together and they flatten. And they connect and they become the magnetic space geometry known as a cube or a cubic wave form. And you can kind of see this here in these, in these, these drawings, these symbols here. Outward and inward explosions are resisted at their maximum in the direction of the six points where spheres meet. They are consequently deflected to eight points of at least resistance, which become diagonals of cubes instead of radii of spheres. Eight directions of two-way expressed force are thus generated, which become the basis of the octave wave. Outward inward explosions projected through each other develop two opposed pressures. The outward direction divides its potential by expanding it radially. The inward direction multiplies it by compressing it radially. Thus, the two opposite plus a minus equilibrium conditions are produced, which motivate the electric universe of two-way motion. Give to it its heartbeat and produce all effects of illusion caused by the interchange of the two conditions of matter. Okay, I know that's a mouthful. Again, sort of re-edifying the same thing. You can see here that when spheres come together, they flatten and they form a cube. And it's done through pressure. So the electric universe is basically molded into matter based on different pressure conditions. And then here's, again, another cube, cubic waveform. And you can see in the next, the next visual how the, the, the cathode rays, uh, the cathode edges, uh, are moving towards the, the, inter, the center of stillness where they were first formed and born. And then from there, the center is still moving more outward towards the end of the cathode rays. And this is, again, that breathing or pulsation, that inhale-exhale of sphere and cube, sphere and cube, to create the universe to create what we call motion, light, matter. All right, moving on. Pairs of interchanging opposed conditions are born from each other and become each other as a consequence of that interchange. As opposed, as opposites in nature are likewise born. The cube and the sphere are two opposites of form from which all forms of things are born. They are the only forms ever created, being father and mother of all forms. The point here is that all of the platonic solids, all of our, our magnetic space geometries, all of our form, all of our geometry, you know, the dodecahedron, the icosahedron, the tetrahedron, and so on, all of these geometric forms are originally born from the cube and the sphere. That's the original form of all forms. The sphere and the cube both manifest the cosmic principle of balance. Their position in light waves is the one balanced position in the wave 
where compression and expansion have ceased to oppose each other, which is at wave amplitude, known as the crest in the trough. Okay, that's the reason why it gives birth to all form, is because it's actually the universe's way of making the most perfect balance, which is the cube in the hemisphere. That creates crest and trough of all waves in any form, light waves, radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays, any kind of rays, they're all born of, the, of this magnetic space geometry of the cubic wave form. Carbon and sodium chloride are good examples of true cube crystallization. Likewise, their atomic units are true spheres. Sodium iodine or sodium bromide are not crystallized in true cube because of their unbalanced positions near, but not upon, the plane of wave amplitude. So he's basically saying that geometric forms eventually become all forms. You know, they become the minerals, uh, they become, you know, earth, air, water, fire, so on and so on and so on. The cube and the sphere are one, being two opposite phases of the same thing. The cube is the sphere extended to black coldness, while the sphere is the cube contracted to white incandescence. Every true sphere in every light wave is an incandescent sun, regardless of its dimension. Prolatating spheres, such as our sun, are becoming incandescent inward toward their centers, while oblating spheres, such as our planets, are becoming cold inward toward their centers. The cube is born from the sphere to fulfill the desire of the creator to produce form by projecting light from incandescence toward the cold dark of heaven. Conversely, the sphere is born from the cube to fulfill the other desire for oneness by reprojecting cold dark from the heavens to light in the seed. Okay, that's pretty heavy. Uh, I don't have much of a good visual here, but the point is, is that when we look at a planet or a star, what we have to realize is that it's not just sitting there emanating light from within. It's a balance. It's actually taking in the darkness around itself and harmonizing and transforming that energy into light. And this is a expression and a, it's a giving and a re-giving. It's an expression, it's a, a folding and an unfolding. It's also a gravitation and a radiation, all at the same time. And this, this is the hard part for people to get, is that this balance, this equilibrium, is what, what we live in. It's what we're here to experience all the time. Okay, the cube is born from the sphere to fulfill the desire of the creator to produce form by projecting light from incandescence toward the cold dark of heavens. The creation of all form of matter is an eternal interchange between the father light of incandescent spheres and the mother light of cold cubes. All forms are born in the direction of the coldness of space and are voided in the direction of incandescence. Every creating body is set out into space from its crucible in the sun to cool into the form appropriate to its extension from the sun. That is one half of the cycle, cyclic journey of every body from the sun and back to it. The other half of the cycle is the return of the sun to void the body of its form for the purpose of acquiring a new body. Every cycle of motion is a journey from heat to cold and back again. All bodies are formed by freezing and voided by melting. The freezing and melting points of all bodies are dependent upon their respective densities and electric conditioning. So just like gravitation and radiation is saying that a planet is birthed from its source, the sun, and it moves away in circular orbits in a vortex cone. And as it moves away, it's going through this process of cooling down. In that process of cooling down, it's actually constantly balancing itself through radiation and gravitation, which is like breathing. And eventually, it disappears completely as it cools down and becomes, literally becomes, the darkness of space, which is 
pure energy.